Today I'm at Master Touch Automotive and this is Maurizio. He's going to be disassembling the entire engine as well as reassembling the new one. This happens to be one of the oldest engines I own. It was first used in this Series 2 that I had in the mid 90s uh, pictured here at Bondi Beach. Soon after I bought this Series 2, it started puffing out white smoke and the valve stem seals needed to be replaced. So seeing I needed all this work done anyway, Graham Smith, my mechanic at the time, recommended these twin carbs which I put on as a first modification. And then I started working on the interior, had the seats done, had the carpet done, reskin the dashboard and so on. And then one day this happened. A truck went through a stop sign and I went under the truck. So now I have a car with a new top end and twin carbs and a new interior, but now I need to find a nose cone. While I was looking for parts, I came across this complete shell. What they were selling is a Series 2 1982, but just the shell, the engine and the interior were missing. I now had the shell painted this uh, blue colour. It was originally green as you saw and I kind of wish I kept it green, but it was too late by the time I realised what I did, it was already blue. And if you're wondering the colour, it's a RAV4 blue and here's the paint coat. The Grey Series 2 ended up at Graham Smith's workshop where he pulled it apart and reassembled all the bits for me onto the blue car. At the time, I didn't know how to do it myself. The reassembly was going well and as you can see there the twin carb engine is now inside this car rather than the grey one. This was actually the first picture I took when I got it home. And shortly after this the Fiat Concorso was on so I took it there for the first time. And then in 2016, the head gasket blew. So top end rebuild once again. But this time I was not gonna keep this engine in this car. I had a 1600 stroker on the way and I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. But all looks good, except except for as we start to turn the piston rings, we have found a cracked piston. Look at a crack. Mm. So this is your compression ring. This is your second ring, which is more of a oil control ring as well as a. Look. Ooh. <laughs> oh what? Okay. God. I feel like he mean breaking pistons yeah 
Okay. So somewhere along the line, this car's either leaned off. Yeah, it's leaned off. Yeah. And also, too, we have number two cylinder. And for sure, this will be cracked piston as well. If we have a real good look at that, the second ring does not move, does not float inside the piston. The first one does, the all control ring does, but not the second. It's actually seized in there. So it's on the one, there's no oil on the exhaust ports, but there is mm. in two, three, and four. Looking at the cylinder head, you can see obvious signs of control ring problems of oil burning in those two cylinders. This cylinder block now needs to be bored. Needs to be sent away, check. So look at that, the piston slap, the piston rubbing up against the bore, that was that broken ring. You can still see the cross hatches down the bottom of the bore. And you can see now that the bore is out of square. So what we need to do here is um, measure these pistons, get a new set of pistons, maybe a set of dome tops. Up the compression a little bit, get a little bit more power in there. It's 86 mil. That's roughly up the top. It's not very accurate to check it like this. Normally you check it halfway down. Yeah, if you have a look at something, I've measured that. That's pretty tight, yeah? Yeah. Watch what happens when I go this way. Oh yeah. So what's happened is the cylinder balls are not round anymore. They become like an egg shape. And that's why we've got those problems with those pistons where yeah. they haven't been running true in the cylinder balls and that's why it shows, it shows all those scraping marks. But next time, start working on the brakes and suspension. Thanks for watching.